Yankees split the four-game set with the Tampa Bay Rays at Tropicana Field. Uh, and I said I would take that going in, especially with the state of the Yankees and, you know, all the injuries and everything like that. But it still stings just because the Yankees won the first two games, lose the next two games. So, you know, winning three to four was certainly there for the taking and they weren't able to do it. So, you know, it's it's fine. You know, it, it would have just been nice to have given yourself a little bit more of a cushion and the Yankees offense specifically, you know, didn't get the job done, which is not a surprise when you consider the Tampa Bay's pitching is good. Um, although, you know, I would have liked the Yankees to have gotten to Corey Kluber specifically. There were missed opportunities against Shane McClanahan, who's been very good this season, but the Yankees, they did have chances. Uh, the starting pitching has continued to be just amazing for the Yankees. Game in, game out. It gives them a chance to win and some. Uh, so the Yankees get the split. Uh, Again, not an awful result, one in which I said I would take going in. But you win, when you win the first two, you start getting greedy and would have liked to have taken three out of four. It didn't happen. Um, really, for me right now, well, first off, Matt Carpenter is a New York Yankee and actually homered this series. So that's a bit of a, a random news bit um, that comes across. Uh, also, Josh Donaldson goes from COVID IL to actual IL. I believe they said it was shoulder inflammation. So that's another big injury. Josh Donaldson, you know, the Tim Anderson stuff aside, uh, you know, Donaldson was really playing some pretty good baseball and was one of the better hitters. So Donaldson uh, on the shelf as well as Stanton, those are the two big ones uh, on the offensive side that are out. Uh, and, you know, for the Yankees, Matt Carpenter is a Yankee now. We'll see how long it lasts. Miguel Andujar now has a big role in this team. And you know what? Roll with him. Let Miguel and Duhar get run in left field regularly. Regularly. Versus righties, lefties. Uh, because he can't be any worse, any worse than Joey Gallo or Aaron Hicks. Joey Gallo and Aaron Hicks, I think Brian Cashman knows at this point that they are going to need to make other plans at some point. Like I think, I don't think he's stubborn enough to just roll with that. Joey Gallo's been batting ninth. Joey Gallo batted ninth the last two games of the series. Aaron Hicks is, he's batted ninth and so I, I think that that's the good news is that they are playing so poorly that there is no decision to be made. And I don't know if Miguel Andujar is the long-term answer, but for now, give him a chance. Uh, you know, he, he was amazing in 2018. The bat's never been the main issue. It's been the fielding and defense. He looks a lot better in left field. You know, he, he was a third baseman. Uh, it didn't ultimately work out there. And, you know, it's been a, a little bit of a transition to the outfield, but he looks okay. So I would let Andujar give him a chance. That's all I ask of the Yankees. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But let him have that opportunity because Gallo and Hicks, it is bad. It is bad, and I don't really ever see it getting better. Gallo, for both. I mean, Gallo, as a Yankee, has been just putrid. Like, so, so bad. Um, worse than he ever was with Texas. Like, I don't like his style of play anyway, but it's even worse. I mean, he can't field in left, in left field. He seems more comfortable in right field. So for me, the defensive alignment now should be Andujar on left, Judge in center, if he can handle it. I think he can. Uh, and, I, and when I say handle it, more from just a injury side of things, and then Gallo and right. Um, that's what I would go with. But I would limit Gallo and Hicks as much as I can, as much as I possibly can. So those are major problems. And then for me, the other person, Kyle Higashioka, um, is also bad, uh, you know, and Trevino plays more than him now, but Higgy, Higgy's not great. But also, these are two other players who need to do better and are flying under the radar. Anthony Rizzo and DJ LeMahieu. Those two players are not doing enough. After hot starts, that's the thing. You get up to a hot start, and it, it kind of saves you a little bit from criticism. But those two players, I think, need to pick it up. Like, whereas Labor Torres, give Labor Torres a lot of credit. He, he has nine home runs. I am honestly kind of shocked. He had nine home runs all of last season. I didn't think Labor had it in him to continue to pick back up that power. He looks like he has. Like these are not cheap. I mean, early on they were some cheap home runs. Now he's hitting some really monstrous shots. So good job on Glaber, but Rizzo and LeMahieu need to do better. So let's jump into the series. And right away it's Nestor Cortez. Uh Nestor just being amazing as he is, uh, goes eight strong. Had given up no runs, and they started him in the ninth. And he, I think it was a leadoff single. 
And then Wandy Peralta ends up giving up a run uh, of Nestor Cortez's. So, uh, you know, I wish it was eight innings, no runs. It's eight innings, one run. His ERA is 1.7 on the season. He has, out of all the good pitchers on the Yankees, he has been the best. Nestor Cortez. And I think if you're a Yankee fan, I think you feel the most confident with Cortez. Um, and that's no slight to anyone else, but that's just the facts. So Nestor improves the 4 1. He was amazing. Uh, this would be the debut for Matt Carpenter. At this point, LeMahieu and Hicks were still injured. So those two were not in the lineup. It was a pretty it was a rough lineup. Gallo at this point was still batting fifth. Eventually he moves down to ninth by the end of the series. Um, and so this was a scoreless game for a while. Ryan Yarborough, who has not been good this season, uh, was shutting down the Yanks, so it was a bit frustrating. But in the sixth, they finally break through. And it actually starts with Matt Carpenter getting hit by a pitch. Marlon Gonzalez singles, and then you get an RBI single by Aaron Judge uh, to make it one nothing. Then uh, Rizzo flies out. Gonzalez goes to third. Judge steals second after they bring Ryan Thompson in. Second and third, Glaber pops out, doesn't get the job done. But Miguel Andujar, with a hard line drive to short, it ends up being an infield single, and then a Taylor Wall's throw um, leads to another run. Uh, so it was a close play. It, it, it was only, I think Ramirez, Harold Ramirez was the first baseman. If he scoops that, I think that Andujar is probably out. It wasn't an easy play, but it was a really big play. Uh, and the Yankees take a 3 nothing lead on that Andujar hit. Uh, in the seventh, the Yankees would add another run as Ralph Garza comes on for the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, it's a wild pitch that scores uh, Isaiah Conifalefa. Um, so, you know, not the prettiest run, but you'll take it. Makes it 4 nothing. Top of the ninth, the Yankees blow it open uh, with a sack fly by Aaron Judge and a two-run double by Anthony Rizzo. So I guess, you know, for Rizzo, that was a moment there, but they're up 5 nothing. So, you know, it counts, but not in the biggest of situations. Cortez, you know, gives up a little single to Wanda Franco. Uh, Wandy Peralta comes in, gives up a couple of runs. You know, Wandy is better in more big spots. That's a good thing. Wandy's kind of a clutch pitcher where in the biggest moments he'll come through. In lopsided games, he won't as much. Um, so the Yankees win it 7-2. to two, A really nice win. And then game two, another really nice win. Jamison Tyone uh, has been fantastic. Honestly, if I'm ranking these Yankees pitchers, maybe he's number two. Like right now. I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying overall, but like in terms of what we've seen this season, Jamison Tyone's been very good. And he improves to 5-1. and one. He goes eight strong of shutout ball. And Clay Holmes, amazing as he is, he uh, closes it out in the ninth. But this is a pretty simple game. Uh, and Jeffrey Springs, who's been very good for the Rays, uh, he goes six innings as of two runs, and it was two runs in the fourth. It was a Glaber Torres home run, his eighth of the year. And then Matt Carpenter, his first home run as a Yankee, makes it 2 nothing, and that would stand. As Tyone goes eight, Holmes pitches the ninth. He does a really good job, uh, Clay Holmes. His ERA drops to .36. Just, I think, what is it now, 24 straight scoreless innings? Just something that just is mind-boggling. But the Yankees uh, win it, and at that point, they do no worse than splitting the series. Unfortunately, that is the end result. And what hurts about it is that it would be Garrett Cole uh, versus Corey Kluber in Game 3. And Cole pitches really well. Cole goes six innings, gives up two hits, one earned run, three walks, ten strikeouts. So Cole, a, a phenomenal outing. Uh, but Corey Kluber is able to kind of shut the Yanks down, and it's been a rough year for Corey Kluber. I mean, you looked at the matchup. This seemed like one the Yankees should win. The fact that it was tied after Colin Kluber was out, to me, was not a good sign. Um, and, and the first inning, the Yankees were able to get some things done. LeMahieu returns. Um, and so that was, you know, kind of good. Although, again, like I said, LeMahieu needs to do better. at this. He's a 250 hitter at this point. Uh, I want to see more. But DJ, leadoff double, judge single, and then a sack fly by Anthony Rizzo. And that makes it one off the Yanks. And... Cole was a little bit shaky in the bottom of the first, but is able to kind of navigate through. And then he cruised until the bottom of the sixth. And I have to say a big, the ump was really bad in this game on both sides. Uh, but the ump was pretty awful. Uh, G-Man Choi was struck out and that would have ended the inning, but it was ball four. And look, and Cole, unfortunately, the next batter, it must have affected him because it was a four pitch walk to uh, Franco. Uh, and so that makes it first and second. So that's where Cole goes wrong. A Rosarena gets a game time RBI single. This is a good pitch by Cole. This is kind of an outside pitch. A Rosarena just kind of dunks it into left, and that ties it up at one. So that's unfortunate. Uh, I thought the Yankees might have still lost this game. When you, you only score one run, you're not going to win. 
But that makes it 1 1. And so that G Man Choi call looms large. Um, in the bottom of the seventh, Lucas Lickie comes on. I, I, I don't quite, some of the bullpen moves in games three and four to me didn't make a whole lot of sense. One of that being Lucas Lickey uh, coming in, uh, gives up a single and a double. Um, then they're able to get the ad at home. I will say it was an unlucky situation for Lickey and Michael King. Michael King gets a ground out. Long story short, they almost get out of this where it looked really bad at first. King has a spot where it's first and second with two. Uh, was it first? No, no, sorry. First and third. Right, that's what it was. King almost gets a double play from Walls, but Walls has too much speed and he beats it out. So it keeps sitting alive, and Yandy Diaz gets a lucky chop infield single. Nothing you can do about that. Um, you know, just literally, you know, perfect placement, and the Rays take a 2 1 lead. We go to the top of the eighth. Jason Adam is on for the Rays. Connor Falefa gets a two-out single, and Aaron Hicks pinches for Jose Trevino. Why? Can you explain why? Because he's Aaron Hicks? I mean, Trevino has been one of the cluster players on this team. What is Aaron Hicks going to do? Hit a home run? I don't think so. He's only had one home run all year, and that was as a righty. Like, as a lefty, he looks completely lost. So I, I, I just don't understand that shit at all. And what does Hicks do? Strikes that swing. Not much of a surprise. So um, we go to the bottom of the eighth. And Michael King, it's been shaky for Michael King. Like, let's just be honest. He finished that seventh. In the eighth, it's leadoff triple for Franco. He does get a grand out to hold Franco there, but then it's a one-out uh, RBS single for Manny Margo uh, and gives the Rays a 3-1 to one lead. So not great. And then Colin Poche goes 1-2-3 in the ninth, uh, and the Rays win it 3-1. So that, that was tough just because, um, like, I would say the Rays honestly might have been the better team in this game in terms of just, like, pure, you know, getting things done. Um, but Culver's Kluber, Cole pitched really well. You want to win that one. So we had to game four where I was skeptical against Shane McClanahan, but the Yankees actually got to McClanahan. The Yankees out hit the Rays nine to two and lost by two runs. They out hit the Rays nine to two. And then it just was by one run. They lost by two. That's pretty bad. Um, and so this loss really stings because the Yankees go 0 for 9 runners in score position. There were so many chances for the Yankees to break through and they just could not do it. Um, Aaron Hicks starts for the first time in a bit. Uh, Aaron Judge goes to DH. Hicks is the center fielder. Uh, Gallo's batting ninth. Uh, this and that. And Severino pitches well. Severino, you know, he, uh, he makes a couple of mistakes. Home runs that didn't go out by much. Uh, it would be Choi and Walls. Uh, the Walls one, you know, really, Walls have been struggling. So that's not a good one. But Severino goes six and a third, two hits. Four earned runs. We'll get into the four. Is it The four runs don't look great. And partial blame goes to Severino, but he pitched well. Um, you know, again, two hits in six and thirds innings, gets eight strikeouts, gave the team a chance to win. And McClanahan uh, just got out of a lot of jams. McClanahan pitched well, don't get me wrong. Um, but he's been a monster this year. And the Yankees, relative to expectation, did okay until they just couldn't get it done. Uh, and so in the second, Labor Torres gets a RBI, sorry, an RBI, a home run. Uh, a home run for Glaber. Glaber Torres, I like what I'm seeing from him. Uh, I, I've been pretty harsh on Glaber, but I, I think there's really good signs. And so uh, ninth and one of the season for Glaber. Eventually you have a first and third one out spot and Kyle Higashioka strikes out swinging. It's just, it is bad. Uh, it is bad for Higgy. And, and I don't think he's going anywhere, but I think you need, you need to at least to explore that possibility. Trevino, I think, is settled in very nicely. Uh, I think Trevino is more of a backup, ideally. But but to me, Higgy, that that's a minor, I'm looking at a minor league catcher. I'm sorry, guys. I, like I'm just I'm looking uh, at a minor league catcher. So Joey Gallo then grounds out. Uh, I no surprise that he doesn't get the job done because Joey Gallo is Joey Gallo. And then G Man Choi homers to make it one one. We go to the top of the third. It's first and third no outs for the Yankees. And Anthony Rizzo with just an awful at bat strikes out. Just n un not competitive. Then Glaber Torres strikes out, and then Miguel and Duhar grounds out. So another complete missed opportunity uh, for the Yankees. Then let's jump to the bottom of the fifth when Taylor Walls uh, gives the Rays the lead with a home run. Uh, gives the Rays a 2-1 lead. Top of the sixth, with McClanahan still in there, it's first and second no out, and Aaron Hicks lines out to third. So, uh, you know... 
I can't totally destroy him because, you know, he hit the ball pretty hard. Still, you know, I wish Hicks would just actually come through. Doesn't happen. And then, and then kind of left a double play. So just time after time, multiple runners on. First and third, one out. First and third, no out. First and second, no out. And nothing at all. Literally, no, I mean, nothing. No advancement of the runners, anything. So we move to the bottom of the seventh. And that's when Severino walks Franco and Choi. He does then strike out Margot, but because his pitch count was so high, he comes out of the game. And the Yankees bring in Ron Marinaccio. Why? Why would Clark Schmidt, or, or even Miguel Castro, I kind of forgot about Miguel Castro. He hasn't pitched in a while. But, like, why not Clark Schmidt? Why Ron Marinaccio? That makes no sense. You, you can't explain that one to me. You, you just can't. And then what does he do? He walks Walls. He walks Harold Ramirez to score a run. He hits Zanino. Uh, to score another run. So Marinaccio, I, I just don't understand it. Doesn't make sense. So that makes it four to one. Uh, and then he does get out of the, the rest of the inning. We move to the eighth. Uh, Colin Poche gives up a home run to Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is 18th home run of the season, uh, continuing just his ridiculous uh, MVP level season for Aaron Judge to this point. So uh, then Glaber gets a one-out single, moves, which was his third hit of the game. A wild pitch by Colin Poche, and then unfortunately, Miguel Duhar is ahead in the count and eventually pops out. So Duhar, who's been pretty good, but I'm waiting for that explosion, and it hasn't come yet. Uh, Glaber steals third. Aaron Hicks is up, and I will say he hits the ball pretty well up the middle, and Walls makes a nice play to throw him out. So Hicks, you know, at least putting up some competitive at-bats again. I don't like the guy, but it is what it is. Then Clark Schmidt pitches a 1-2-3 eighth. Why would Clark Schmidt be in the eighth down 4-2? Instead of first and second, one out, down one in the seventh. Mind-boggling again. Uh, and then the Yanks go down one, two, three in the ninth. Uh, just like they did the day before. They lose by two again. Uh, and so they split. And now they will face an Angel team that just had a rough series against uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. So what's a bad combination is them doing poorly against the AL East foe. I mean, you would have wanted the Angels to do well against the Blue Jays. And the Angels coming in and doing well against the Yankees. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But this will be an interesting series. Uh, former Met Noah Syndergaard. Uh, I guess we'll be making his return to New York, uh, going up against Jordan Montgomery. Then it'll be Ro Reed Detmers. Reed Detmers is a young pitcher who threw a no-hitter this year. Uh, he'll be going up against Nestor Cortez. And then game three uh, is scheduled to be Shohei Otani versus Jamison Tyone. So some pretty interesting matchups uh, on tap here uh, across the board. So... We'll see. It won't be easy for me. I'm just hoping to win a series. The Angels, uh, you know, they're a pretty good team. They're 27 and 22. The Yanks are 33 and 15. And so I'm just, you know, at this point, looking to just win a series at home. Won't be easy. But, you know, I think the Yankees starting pitching will certainly give them a chance every night. And we'll see what happens. So, again, the Yanks uh, split the series at the Trop against the Rays. And now they head home to take on the Los Angeles Angels.